Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits. And my name is Amanda, also known as Dramatic Mandy. And today is Monday, March 18th, 2019. This is episode 327. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more episode. And if you're new, hopefully you enjoy today's episode and you'll come back in the future. So, we're going to quickly recap our last two weeks to get you caught up to date, and then we're going to get to the knitting. Um, I am fresh out of the van. Well, not completely fresh out of the van, but uh, pretty close to fresh out of the van uh, from our last vending, which I'll talk about here in a second. So, um, that's why we're a little late, but we're here nonetheless. So, um, the last two weeks have been busy. Last weekend, Andy and I went to Zionsville, Indiana, um, where the Village Yarn Company is, and we did a trunk show with them last Saturday, which is a good time. She has such a great um, community out there, and so um, we set up on Friday. It was a little exhausting, but uh, we hit the hotel and crashed and got up Saturday and attended the trunk show and got to hang out with people and try one of their local diners. They have the cutest little downtown there and tons of amazing restaurants, I'm sure. We've tried two of them, but next time we be, we're back, we will try another one. And so, yeah, enjoyed the trunk show. We got to tear down in the rain, which was all a lot of fun, but uh, we made it back home Saturday evening, and then we got back to work on Sunday, and um, I'm sorry the dog is bothering us. We're back, of course, in the new studio, and the dogs are here, but they one is persistent. On he getting in our laps. Yes, but it's not his place right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we spent all last week working really hard in the studio and getting things taken care of and errands. We had to get both of our windshields replaced on the van and the car due to um, cracks, and which both turned into like full horizontal length of the windshield cracks. Um, so it was time to get it done. You need to stop, bud. Stop. <laughs> oi, oi vey, I say. Um, so uh, there was that going on, lots of, you know, administrative stuff around the studio. Um, and then on Wednesday, we packed up and left for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we got there on um, Wednesday evening and we took our time Thursday morning uh, just relaxing. And then around noon, we got to set up for the Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Festival and Creative Arts Festival. They've tagged that on because it's not just knit and crochet. So we spent a good couple of hours setting up on uh, Thursday afternoon and then we went back to our hotel and had our leftover dinner for lunch and we had to run a few errands. And then we finished setting up and then had to run a few more errands um, t for our new lighting system for our booth that, you know, we had to kind of feel it out how best to get it to work and what we thought would work didn't work so um, we had to work through things and um, yeah so we eventually got set up and then Friday uh, Saturday and Sunday was the market um, which was great fun and it had three rooms we were in the largest and then there was two other rooms that had vendors of all different sorts and on Saturday afternoon I got to teach my boomerang class which was an honor to teach for them uh, I had eight wonderful students in my class, and they all seemed to lo thoroughly love the class and walked away with some sort of gem of knowledge from the class, which I was happy to, um, you know, share my, my wee bit of knowledge about that subject with them. So they enjoyed that, and um, yeah, and then we tore down yesterday. We kind of took our time, and we got about two hours on the road, and we got a little bit of sl slurry snow. Um, uh, and we uh, stopped for the night and got up this morning and drove the rest of the way home. We uh, had about an hour of complete stop traffic on the highway due to an accident, but they were able to clear that up and, you know, we just turned off the car and I knit. I was napping until Andy came to a very abrupt stop, <laughs> which woke me up due to, you know, everyone stopping. Uh, so, Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, bummer. Your nap was in a rut. I wasn't really napping. I was awake the whole time, but it was like I was trying to sleep to my side like I usually do. And then the road was so bumpy that I eventually like put my arm down. And I was like this. And then I was like, yeah, I just, 
I actually got, he drove the whole way there and the whole way back home. And I actually got to knit, which is, you're going to see a lot of progress on a couple of um, projects. But I'm going to let pass it over to Amanda and let her know, <laughs> let her tell you what's been going on. Because this guy is utterly persistent and wants to be on the podcast, don't you? He's so yes. handsome. <laughs> He's out of breath because he's been trying to get up this whole time. Um, I can't remember last week. Not much. Just hung out here. Because when they're gone, I'm here <laughs> with the puppies, which is awesome. <clears throat> I actually miss them because I've been gone this weekend. Um, I went up to Chicago to go to a St. Patty's Day. I almost said barn crawl. This is, like, my world now. I'm, like, constantly, like, animals. I bought this shirt. Um, Which has what on it? They're llamas. Llamas. Yeah. Llama, 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 llama. Duck. Or is it goose? Whatever. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was really fun. I thought it wasn't... I thought something terrible was going to happen this weekend because the past week leading up to it nothing could go right for my friend and I we tried to get these shirts that was a fiasco oh lord that was a fiasco luckily I got refunded today but they they weren't cheap shirts either so I was like really and we were looking forward to it we had this whole photo shoot planned um we have a picture of us in front of Wrigley Field that we wanted to actually like every time we go there take a picture in front of again and like recreate it like one of those uh I don't know what you call it but like then and now I guess pictures and then of course they were doing construction on Wrigley so you couldn't really I mean oh well that didn't happen but we had fun uh got to catch up with some friends so there was that hate the CTA oh my goodness uh but yeah and now I'm here, this little man. I miss them a lot. They stayed with Grandma. But, yeah, that's it. Can I have you? I think he wants to go over to you anyway. Or get back on the table like he was on before we hit record, which he knows he's not supposed to ever be on the table. But, anyway, somebody's spoiled. You want to be another like co-host? What did you do? I hung out, chewed my bones, played with my brother. Mm-hmm. Took lots of naps. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Licked lots of things. He licks everything. Rubbed his back on the carpet. Okay, yeah. I'll put you down. <laughs> he says no. All right, well, let's get to the knitting, shall we? Thanks for sticking with us through our week in review, and hopefully you all had a really good last two weeks. Um, so what's taking a bow from either one of us? I got snuffing. I'm sorry. I I might have cast on a couple of things, but not too many. But uh, that took away from, wow, if that glare could talk. What? I was looking at you in the camera and you were like, I was like, I cast on a few things and you're like. It's just my face. We both suffer from it. <laughs> um, so I don't have anything finished. Oh, but you do. I do. She has her own show notes, so I forgot. Yeah, I wrote some stuff. Um, so I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And then I finally did it last weekend, I think. But it is a... First of all, if you do not, cannot already tell, Amanda is a huge dog lover. Even though she's allergic. I love all animals. Yes, but dogs especially. Yeah. They're so fluffy. Okay, I'm going to put you down, bud. <clears throat> Thank you. So, I made a... It's called a Feel and Fancy Bow Tie, and I don't know who wrote the pattern because it doesn't tell me, but it's from this book called Outrageously Adorable Dog Knits. And I believe that was gifted to us by our fairy yarn mother. Yes, and I'm sorry, I had to keep it. <laughs> we always get first dibs <laughs> on what she sends for us in the podcast, and Amanda's like, I'll keep this one. But I'll show you the actual picture in here. Which is funny because the dog actually looks like Ernest. Yeah, because it's a Yorkie. Super cute, super cute, and I, I had to. I thought it was adorable, 
and Andy doesn't really want me to dress up the dogs, but I thought, and he thought it was cute. He, I thought a bow tie would be okay because it's not, um, so it's a little messed up. Oh, and that's on a size six using, I want to say like, it called for like a worsted or thicker maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't tell me actually, it just said double knit yarn. So I'm DK, but oh yeah, you're I think right. you used like worsted, but it's but it's it still worked. Um, so this is after he wore it for a week. If you want to see a better picture on my Instagram or the dog's Instagram, there's a picture, but um, it's on his collar, and I think it's it's cute. It looks really cute on him. Uh, I need to make another one for Cornelius, but I'm I think I'm going to switch it up because the pattern had you just knit the whole thing and it doesn't have good like it doesn't keep its shape it just kind of rolls in and I thought it would and I've seen other ones online that do like seed stitch so I'm gonna play around with the like formula of the bow tie and try out different ones to see which ones hold better but it's adorable Got to make another one for Cornelius. If any of you out there have knit doggy bow ties and have good recommendations, yes, you can always PM her on Ravelry and let her know, or link to them in the show notes or the episode thread on Ravelry. Yeah. So that's all I have done. Cool. All right. Well, I'm really proud of that because that's something you're bringing to things to the podcast that I would never knit. So we're getting a wider array of projects here in uh, the Dramatic Knit Studio. So, all right, let's get to what's performing then. What have I been working on? So first for me, I got to kind of dig through my bag of whips over here. It's a very big bag. I brought everything with me because, you know, when you're gone six days, I and I did knit a little bit on everything. I'm sorry, I'm out of the frame. But I did knit a little bit on everything, and I knew I would want to switch up things. So, um, first for me is my advent Adventurer's Wrap by Ambo O'Brien. I'm using Lady Men Fiber Arch Showstopper Mini Skeins in the 2018 It's Not an Advent Advent Collection. Um, and a size 5 US 3.75 millimeter needle. And I think I'm on a, the next color after what you saw. Um, I only worked on this, I think, once. But, oh no, there's somebody walking past the studio window. Shh, Cornelius. You may not see him this episode, but you'll hear him. So, uh, there's that. It is not a red yet. It is, um, I'm in our Tangelo colorway, and this was papaya before it, so. And that's just an M that needs to be, I don't know, that's my working on. But. Yeah. So, there's that, and it's always fun to see going through everything. I'm getting close, and I've woven in more ends at one point or another. So that's it so far, but it'll be good to get it done, and then we'll make a certain amount of kits again um, when the sample is done to go with us, and then once it's gone, then we'll be, for by the time it's done and the certain amount of kits sell, it'll be ready for, like, for next year's. So um, that's that. Next up for me is my socks on a plane. Oh, there's the other yarn I was telling you about. It's in here. And I'm back. Um, maybe. Okay. He so just has again, too many in there. I do. <laughs> um, so as I said, I am uh, basically taking the cable. Uh, panel from Laura Linneman's sock on a plane pattern and putting it on my sock recipe. So I'm on the second sock. I'm knitting this on a size 1 US 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, two circs, using two circs. There's the cable panel. I'm using um, Ethereal Fibers Nebula sock in the Natural History Nudie Run colorway. And then I've started the heel flap. Uh, the second sock using Leading Man Fiber Arch Showstopper Intermission in the Sandcastle colorway. And so I have a few more rows to do on that before I start turning the heel. So. I love those. About halfway done on that sock. 
All right, next up, I worked, uh, while we were stuck in traffic today, I worked on this. This is my Make Your Own Luck Shawl by Lisa Ross, and I'm using Black Cat Fiber's Nomad Sock in the Melancholia Gradient, as well as Leading Men Fiber Arts Showstopper in the Darkest Hour colorway. And I am on a new color from last time. So I'm working on this turquoise blue, striping it with the black. That's what we're doing at this section here. And so there's a little bit there. It actually goes this way, if you want to be correct. Points down here. So if we start all the way down here, and then it kind of goes to there, and then it goes to there, and then it goes to this, and I'm in the blue. So, um, whether you can see down here or not, this is the actual point where it stopped actually increasing, and now we're just shifting, and um, the stitch count remains the same, but it's actually shifting and going up this way. So, um, yeah. Loving this. I had a couple of people um, stop by our booth in uh, Pittsburgh and say, you know, I love that make your own luck, that rainbow shawl that you're working on. So thank you so much. I do too. Um, it's all due to Antoinette at Black Cat Fibers. Go on over, check out their shop. They do amazing work. We all, everyone at Dramatic Knits loves the Black Cat ladies, Antoinette and Nana. But Antoinette was knitting on this and finished it at Stitches SoCal last year, and I had to have my own kit. And that's living in my Whimsy Stitches bag from our year in review uh, this past year. All right, the next two are new, and one I cast on for um, a class sample for my class N boomerangs, and I wanted to show a variation on how you can take a very basic yarn and do something very simple in order to modify it and make it something else. So I wanted to show, hey, you could take... I took it. It wants to go with Amanda because it's her favorite color. <laughs> but you could take a black yarn that everyone's like, oh, stab my eyes out. I don't want to knit black. I don't mind it so much, but as long as you put it with something. But you could take a skein of black yarn, and what could you do? <laughs> oh, ferocious, ferocious, ferocious FedEx man. If you've got earbuds in, I'm sorry. It's just going to happen. So... Um, what you could do is you can add a skein of mohair silk lace weight, which is all the rage these days. No leading men fiber arts is not bringing it in. Um, this is not like this is not a, a base that we particularly want to bring in, but there are plenty of dyers who are dyeing this base now. And I picked this up from our local yarn store, which is Le Mouton Rouge Knittery in Bloomington, Illinois. And she carries Stitch Together Studio out of Iowa who does some amazing work and I want to join one of her clubs because she's got like four she does every month. How she does all that, I don't know. But, um, so this is in the Devil's Lettuce colorway and it's got like these highlighter yellow greens with pops of like rusty yellow. I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, this is my first time knitting with mohair silk lace weight, holding it with fingering weight. And I really like the effect it's having. Um, do not judge. There are quite a few times I did not catch the mohair silk lace weight, so there's um, a few slubs and nubs. It's like a cat toy. It looks so different on camera. It's so cool in person. This is yeah. the first time I'm seeing this. So um, it's really cool. It's fuzzy. I don't know if I would like this around my neck. I will gift it to somebody who doesn't mind. But I told Andy I think it would be really, you see it a lot like either in sweaters for texture, but like hats, I could see that being really cool for hats. Um, but it, I've been going, it's one squishier because I'm still using a size six. And when you hold the fingering and the lace weight together, it makes about a sport weight. But what I've been doing is I kind of just graze my hands over it to get that like mohair feel. And mohair is much different than even when I started knitting. This is much softer and not as itchy as when I started knitting. But yeah, so a black yarn, you can, you know, find a cool skein of mohair silk lace weight and put it together and make a boomerang. So that's what these two look like together. So cool. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, so I worked on that a little bit in the van right before we got home and everyone was kind of amazed how it looked in the class. So 
And last but not least, <clears throat> excuse me, I came across an Instagram post. I follow guys who knit on Instagram, and basically they're a reposting account where they repost from guys who knit. Um, and I saw this sweater that I feel like I've been living under a rock and like everybody's known about it. But I saw the sweater at lunch, and you can ask Amanda, she was sitting next to me. I literally gasped out loud, put down what I was eating, and turned around and went on the computer, got on Ravelry, and bought and printed the pattern, and I said, I'm casting this on. And so I picked out yarn that afternoon, um, and I cast on that night, um, and I've been kind of going to town on the drive. I worked on it the whole drive to Pittsburgh which was about nine hours because of an hour detour of forgetting the cash register. Um, that was not my fault. But anyway, I realized I can't work on it for that long. I need to do like, I'm at the lar the biggest circumference right now, so I need to do like three rows and put it down for a while. I was doing the catching of floats and all that stuff. This is three color Fair Isle, which I've never done. I'm not the biggest fan of color work. I am dropping and picking up every stitch. I'm not knitting with two hands. Um, and then I decided on the way back yesterday that I was done catching floats because I actually think my gauge looks better and will block out better without catching the floats. And since it's up in the yoke, my hand's not like going through sleeves or color, you know what I mean? And Andy's like, well, what about your glasses? I was like, okay, yeah, I'll take off my glasses for this. Like, mm. there's big floats in here that I'm not catching. And I know some of you are like, sacrilege, you should catch your floats. I get that. I tried. It's very difficult with three colors. I don't, I mean, I, I figured it out on my own. I didn't look at anything to figure out how to knit with three colors. So, that being said, oh, I was going to show you. I don't have the printed pattern. But I was going to show you what it looks like. This is the For Fox Sake sweater um look it up on ravelry because really it's like the most amazing sweater it has foxes on it with wearing eyeglasses come on now and he's working on a new sweater that is called the uh frankly my dear sweater it's cool but i don't think it's as cool as the fox one it's harder to see the deer i feel like um so i'm using leading men fiber arts dramaturg it's a dk weight sweater in um london fog Rusted, sure. The Grouch, and then I did not have this color in DK, but I had it in Worsted, and it's close enough for the. It's only used in the color work. I'm using Heirloom. So these are my colors. I'm going a bit different. He used gray and like a copper, like a smoky quartz of ours color, and then like two different blues, uh, or like no, he used. There was a blue. There was a blue, an indigo color, and then a white, which was more <laughs> kind of like this creamy white. Which I could have done, but um, I really wanted to use this rusted, and I felt like the blue wasn't going to contrast as well um, as the green. And I'm happy I went with the green. I don't think it looks Christmassy, so I'm happy with it. But um, here's where I'm at so far. I've started the fox's ears, like two rows into the... And it's so budged up on here, y'all. <laughs> but I'm doing three color fair out. Look... <laughs> Amanda's like, what kind of voodoo is that? But I can kind of... It's going to need a lot of... It is very thick because it's three strands on every row. But it's going to need a lot of blocking. It's only up at the top, though. The main body of the sweater is just plain. But somebody said these look like Starfleet something from Star Wars. And then you have this, like, point around the fox and then it's got like a little leaf in between the fox's ears and then there's the fox's ears so what i thought was really cool about this sweater is you just cast on and go and then what you do is you actually pick up and do the ribbing up so you can customize it because i always hate how necklines look on knitted sweaters so you can knit it in and decrease as much as you need to as long as my gigantor head will fit through the head hole through the neck hole then um, I can make it so it's not, you know. I hate when so much of my undershirt shows under a sweater. Yeah, I hate it too. When it's a <laughs> split collar. No, I don't mean that. I'm just, yeah. nothing against you, but yeah, I get it. Like, 
You don't want it that to show. Well, and it comes, a lot of my sweaters come down in the back, and you have, like, that much of my undershirt showing, and... But anyway, yeah, so... It is going to be thick, it's going to be warm, but once I get to the body, it'll be fine, so... Um, but that's color work, and I feel like it's especially due to Caitlin Hunter, who's Boylan Networks on Instagram, as well as many, many other designers I've heard of, Jennifer Steingast. Color work is having its day right now. And so I'm like, well, I need should have a sample. And what better to have a men's, or unisex, I should say, um, sample. Is There's a women's pictured version of it. So go on out and check for Fox sake on Ravelry and check it out. Um, like I said, he's working on a new... Um, sweater and his partner they're from uh, Canada his partner is the one who's designed the Montrealer which is a striped hoodie that I've been wanting to knit um, I so I, I didn't know if you like knew about it because yeah. I saw it and I was like Steve needs to make that yep so I want to make that one um, that would even be cute for Andy to wear yeah Andy well and Andy said something he's like well should stripes be on a bigger person well I'm gonna wear what I want to wear jeez Darn right. Be comfortable in my knitwear. Um, but the guy who did the Montreal, I can't remember his name right now. Um, he's having a new release of a new sweater next Thursday when they're both going to arrive at Edinburgh for the uh, Edinburgh Yarn Fest. They're going. I'm not. Um, <laughs> I was hoping to maybe make things work. We were invited and uh, our schedule is just too crazy. But maybe we can plan for next year in 2020. We'll see. Um... But uh, they have some new sweaters in, in the works. So um, I'm not a, as huge of a fan of the newest one that's coming out next Thursday. It's kind of a color blocked one color for the first half and then with texture and then plain on the bottom. Um, for my not so toned physique, unlike him, he's very, very good looking. Um, I, I, I don't need to accentuate my, my belly. So, um, yeah. Super excited. And of course, I had to put this in my um, Woodland Fox bag that um, was generously um, gifted to me uh, by Darlene of Bags by Awesome Granny. So check out her bag. She, I, I stuffed eight skeins in here. No. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Eight skeins. So there's eight skeins plus my project living in there. That's all I'm working on. That's all? That's all. I felt like that wasn't that much. Um, no, it's not as much as it has been. Yeah. But I did need to kind of go into some details about some more. Yeah. So. so, I am working on the partner to his adventure wrap. I'm taking what's left over and making the scarf version. And I am not as far as him. <laughs> Uh, that's because I keep getting distracted and wanting to do other things. That's the problem. But I did do a little bit of work. And I am doing this on a size 5. I wrote 6. But it is a 5. So I am in the green right now. I think, what is that? The grouch? No. Yes. Mm, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So I just started the grouch. So that's all. You all saw it earlier. It's just... I actually think you're going to rock this next winter. I think you'll get some use out of it. I can see you wearing oh, it. Oh, I am? I thought we were going to keep it here. We might. But if you need it, I can see you Well, I have a... It. I've never shown anyone. Maybe I should bring it in for show and tell. I... <clears throat> back in the early days of me starting to knit, which was just about a year ago or so, we were somewhere. I don't know. I was traveling with you, maybe Indiana or something, but I made a scarf out of, it was just acrylic yarn. There's but nothing wrong with that. Don't be derogatory to that. No, acrylic. but I, because instead, like, I was just saying, whatever. But, um, it was just a red, and I, I should have written down what I did, but I kind of designed it myself, and I loved it, and I haven't worn it this winter, because I didn't even bring out my winter coat, but I wore it all... Um, last year or whatever, so I thought it was cute, but so that's that. And then I did get a little bit, so I showed my, um, I'm doing the, my favorite vanilla socks by Megan Schmaltz, and it's just a 
regular pair of socks. And this is knit on a size one and a half. And I've gotten this much done on my <laughs> on my second one. But we're But at least there. it's cast on and you're not right. gonna have second sock syndrome where you just keep putting it off. For yeah, no, off. it is cast on. And the reason I'm not farther is because I started another project. <gasps> what? That's and, three. And not That's the, three active projects, Amanda. Well, technically it was four because of the boat. Well, time. you finished that. Right. But at one point it was four. So I started another project. So I told you last episode I had two skeins of, uh, wor I think it's worsted, and um, I didn't know what to do with it because I didn't want to make a hat. And oh, sorry. I looked on Ravelry for like nine hours straight. And, and this is, uh, I had two skeins. I had their Lion brand yarn. One was Heartland and Heartland Tweed. I don't know. They don't have names, do they? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say that. Chu. Chuhahoga Valley? Yeah. So that. Sorry. The whatever he just said, Valley, is this. Sorry for the noise. Is this very pretty. Tealy green. Yes. That's pretty. Very pretty. And then the Heartland Tweed was Mount Rainier Tweed. And. It is this like silvery gray with like little specks of tweed. Yeah. They're nubs. Different I've color never, nubs though. I've never knit with tweed before, so um and I actually started a project with these that was I can't remember what it was, but it was basically it was holding two strands together and then I think it was just, oh no, it was it was like a ribbed scarf, but it was holding two together. And while I thought it looked really cool, I hated the texture of it because it was just too thick and there was no pliability, no flexibility whatsoever. And I was like, I'll never get use out of that. So I ended up taking it out and I found this, um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry called 8020. And... It's knit on a size 10.5, and what it is is a scarf that is just all seed stitch, and I think it looks so cool. This is my first time doing seed stitch, and I was staring at it. I'm like, look, it, it, I don't know. It looks so cool to me, and um, I love the texture and feel to it, but all it is is you knit like 80% of it with one color, and then at the end, you bring in your next color for 20%, except I think I might, depending on how long it gets, I might add more of this because I really like the way this looks. Mm -hmm. And um, so who knows? I don't know. I might play around with it. But I'm loving... Or if it gets long enough, you could just make a second one and flip the 80-20. Oh my God, good idea. Oh, well, you would have to use the whole skein of this and then add 20%. But you'd have to weigh your yarn. Yeah. Or you could but, just seam it up and make it into a cowl. Yeah, but I don't love cowls. And the way it is in the picture, she has it kind of like, you know how you like loop it through? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the loop, it was like one strand had like this and the other one had that. And I thought it, I thought it looked really cool. And I, I don't know. I love this seed stitch and the way it feels. So... Working on that, and that's my final project. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's in rehearsal? What are we going to be casting on? Um, I'm going to be uh, getting a new stash acquisition, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then I'm going to cast on for an, um, a new design idea I've had. I posted on Instagram um, with some new stash acquisition that I shopped uh, at the market and my own booth for. Um but I kind of have a very basic uh, wrap idea using um, lace, garter, beads, gradients. I It's very basic, but um, I'm excited to kind of get it, in, get it to start to come to fruition. Um, but I will show you what I'll be using in a little bit when we get to um, stash enhancement. So um, a new design will be popping on the needles for me. So... Uh, I went from dog sweater to cowl to fancy wrap, <laughs> but I'm excited. So 
And I need to get it on the needles because it's actually rather springy colors, springy summery colors, I feel like. So, um, but then I'm going to have to go through the process of like getting a tech editor to like lay it out and test knitters and that's all stuff I ain't got no time for, but I'll do it. I'll do it justice because I, if I, if it comes together, it will be a paid for pattern and, um, the big reason why I'm doing it is I want to be able to have some things of my own design for kits in the shop um, and in the booth at shows. So that's what I'm planning on casting on. Anything for you? No, because I've, I've done two new things. I mean, I, I don't know when, but I do want to do more of the bow ties and play around with them. Cool. All right. Um, behind the scenes, my spinning. I wound off. I made it. I went home to change, and I was like, I need to wind this off. It has been plied, and uh, it hasn't been washed or thwacked yet. But I did finish spinning the Leading Men Fiber Arts Super Sock in the Mother Earth colorway. Again, I kept this for myself because it was a four ounce braid, and when we were doing Super Sock, we were doing six ounce braids. And I did intentionally spin this a bit thicker. I tried to maintain a thicker. Um, ply structure. So it's a 180 yards of a two ply. Um, I would say about an Aran or a worsted weight. So I thought I was actually happy with it. I think it is pretty soft and still squishy for a worsted weight. And it's a, um, I think it's an 80% wool, 20% nylon blend. So um, this will be hitting the shop here probably in the next couple of days once it's washed and pictured and all that fancy jazz. And um, if it doesn't sell in the shop, it'll be at our next show. So there's that. And then of course I had to use my random number generator right before I left to pick out my next braid. And that is some of my um, Three Waters Farm stash that I had from being in their club. And this is their thin top in the Satisfied with Summer colorway. So um, I loved being in their club, but I was like, I think 13 or 14 braids in the hole at one point because I could not, you know, it was coming every month, and I had other, and I had to put it on hold. But, um, and they definitely, while they vary their colors, they definitely have, like, a feel to their line, and so I was like, I need to, you know, and be able to embrace other dye techniques and, and dye, dyers. So, um, I was in their club for about a year and a half, and I'm glad to be using it. <laughs> Sorry, that one scared me. Oh, as much as we'd love to have the dogs here, we might consider not having them for recording days. We'll see. All right, um, so let's move into the scene shop, our other crafting. I did not bring either one of my other craftings because I am close to finishing my cross stitch, the dimensions kit where it says live life in the moment, but I feel like I don't need to show you the same thing over and over again like I always do. So. I will wait to show you till it's finished. I got just a little bit of the little uh, top border, and then I need to backstitch the last word. Um, and then my weaving, I barely put anything on there. I've hem stitched the bottom to get it started uh, after doing a few rows, and I got a few more rows, you know, a few more shuttles back and forth. Um, but I am currently working on a lace weight version uh, using our ghost light base, which is sadly being discontinued, but we do have some in the shop and we still have some more we can dye up. Uh, but um, it's a merino silk blend and I'm using the Man of Mystery and Imperfection colorway. So I'm calling it Man of Mystery and Imperfection scarf. Clever. That's me. Um, so that's what I'm working on in other crafts. I also did not bring mine because I have not touched them in the past two weeks. Um, but I am working on the Colorful Cow Cross Stitch by Artiste. Um, and uh, Paint by Number is called The Old Farmhouse. Haven't touched it yet. Awesome. Ooh, I scratched myself. I got all red. I'm okay. All I did was do that. I, don't, I have sensitive skin sometimes. I remember every time I when we I used to get my hair professionally, you know, trimmed and whatever. Now Andy and I just buzz each other's head. But they'd always like shave the back of my hand. They're like, "You're getting real red on your neck. Are you okay?" I'm like, "I'm fine." I'm like, just, just do what you need to do. All right. 
Um, in the spotlight, instead of going through all the TV shows and things that I've been watching, if I start or finish something, uh, like a TV show, like a season, I will let you know. So, um, we did finish watching Homecoming, which stars, um, Julia Roberts. I could enjoy what they were doing with it. Um, I was a little let down that it became so just everyday common experience with what they were leading up to. It wasn't every day in common, but it wasn't as climactic as I would have liked. I did think that they did some artsy things with cinematography, which were cool. Um, and I did watch, there's a little bit, there's a little mini scene after the rolling credits of the last episode. And uh, I was a bit more confused than answered by anything. But um, I still would probably give it maybe seven, seven out of ten. Um, so that's it. And in movies, um, Andy, Amanda, and myself watched Halloween on Tuesday night. So I'll let her talk more about that because that's her jam. But we enjoyed it. We thought it was pretty good. And then at the hotel, Andy and I watched The First Purge, which is like number five in that series or something. I don't know. It could be even more than that. Um, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, it definitely took... It had its suspense kind of somewhat scary moments, but it definitely dealt more with um, race and socioeconomic status and things of that nature. So, um, yay! It's FedEx again. And he is trying to maintain them, but he turns around to leave and they just didn't help. So. Corn dog just really loves to say hello to everyone in a very ferocious way. Or he's aggressive until you actually take down a barrier of glass. Well, he'll still bark at you until you pet him. So I'm sorry if you have earbuds. <laughs> if it bothers you that much, again, I'm, I, I am sincerely sorry. But maybe this episode, you know, isn't for you today. But there are plenty of other podcasts. But our fur, fur babies are ours, and we love them. So that's all I've been watching. I watched those two movies, and we finished that um, that series. So Yeah, uh, I watched Halloween with them. Um, Was it everything you wanted it to be? No. I enjoyed it. Um, this is the newest Halloween we were talking about. And Halloween is my all-time favorite horror movie and one of my favorite all-time in general um the original John Carpenter one what I did love about this one is <clears throat> they there were a lot of homages to the original um there were some scenes that were like if you know and remember and are like a big fan like me you can point it out and that was like really nice like it was like those little background scenes that you don't typically care about, but uh, it was just like everything was identical and it made me super excited. I was sitting there like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. Um, what I didn't love, I don't know, Michael Myers just wasn't, he wasn't the scary boogeyman enough, I feel like, uh, but it was okay. Um, I liked Rob Zombie's remakes a little bit. More, but that's okay. I feel like they definitely humanized him a lot more, and maybe that's why. Yeah, and that's not what John Carpenter was going for when he created him. So, but that's okay. It was still good, and it was still worth watching. <laughs> Honestly, I'll probably watch it many more times, like I do all the other ones, even the really bad ones. Um, even the really, really bad ones that are like Michael versus Jason, those bad ones. Um, but, uh, yeah, Michael so I watched the... Alien. Yeah, no, there is one in, like, space. No joke. Um, and then I think that's the only movie that I really recall. I might have watched, like, one here or there that was one of those, like... Not one year and out the other, but, like, you know, you forget about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> did start, uh, after Grey's Anatomy, Station 19 has come back on, and it's in the same... Um, like world Shondaland world and it's awesome and I love it it's about so Grey's Anatomy is like the hospital so station 19 is like the um, the fire station it's really good it's so good 
that's on Thursday nights. And Live PD wasn't on this weekend. Luckily, I wasn't around. Uh, but next weekend, I heard there's a new... It's like under the Live PD umbrella, but it's gonna, I think... Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's called Live Rescue. It's gonna be the... Like, other side, it's gonna be the EMTs and the firefighters. Hmm. So, I'm excited to try that out, but... Yeah, that's it. For, oh, no, that's not it for me. So, I have been wanting to read again, and I have been reading true crime after true crime after true crime. And don't get me wrong, I love true crime. But I wanted something new. And so I was doing my midnight browsing, and I found this book that I thought would be good. And it Is this went the on. one you bought in the middle of the night and didn't remember you bought until the next morning? Yeah. Um, so I... I went on to hopped on to my handy dandy abooks.com, which is awesome. It always has the cheapest priced books. Um, but I got this book called The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. And I haven't cracked it open yet, but I, I uh, read it's in the narrator is the dog. The little cute dog. And so I have a feeling I'm going to love it and cry and all that. But. Um, the dog's owner is a race car driver and the so it's just about the dog's life and all of that so and i i don't know if it actually is going to happen but i did read a blurb about it may turn into a movie hmm. so i'm excited to start reading that nice so that's it for me cool beans all right um stash enhancements so before i get into things i purchased this past weekend um we were sent another wonderful package by our fairy yarn mother. And, um, of course, we get first dibs, and I liked a lot of it. I'm not going to lie. So I was like, oh, because I really need it. But, you know, if we ever run out of prizes, I'll start rating my own stash. So it all will either be made into things and donated or, you know, it will have its day. Um, but the colors just spoke to me. And actually Amanda, too. But... She's a better person than I am. And I was like, well, I'll hold on to it. And knowing her, good. she will, you know, she could have, she can shop my, my whole entire stash at any time. So anyway, um, the first thing in there was a skein of Black Cat Custom Yarn. This is a different company than Black Cat Fibers that we many times have used and mentioned. Um, this is their Workhorse Sock, which is 80% Superwash Blue Face Leicester, 20% Nylon. And this is in the colorway Moo, which I thought Amanda would grab immediately because of her love of cows. I don't know what I'm going to make with this. I think I paired it with something on Ravelry. I'm pretty sure I paired it with something on Ravelry. But, so there's that. And then I also nabbed a skein, two skeins of Sueño by Haiku in a wonderful gray. Because it felt amazing, and Amanda wants this, but she won't allow herself to have it. Um, this is in the colorway Gray Heather. There are uh, it's 80% superwash merino, 20% bamboo, um, 255 yards in each skein, so it's two skeins of DK. I think I picked a cowl pattern to do with these. And then last but not least, out of the bag, and I took some pom poms out of there, but I didn't bring them in there. I might actually throw the pom poms in. Um, with yarn prizes if I feel like they go with them if I don't use them by then. But this is a skein of Opal Cotton Premium. So this is um, kind of self-striping sock yarn in cotton, which will be great, um, you know, especially in the warmer months if I want to wear. And I thought it was masculine, so it'd be good for Andy or myself or the gentleman folk in our family for Christmas. So thank you so much, fairy yarn mother. You know who you are. So uh, I grabbed that and then... Um, this weekend, while in Pittsburgh, I got to see one of my longest yarny internet friends. Um, she was at the first ever retreat that I went to, and she was one of the first podcasts that I ever watched, and some of the first independent yarn I ever bought. Um, and that is Lisa of Fiber Nymph Dye Works. So she stopped by um, our booth yesterday on Sunday. She is from the Pittsburgh area, and was just a hop, skip, and a jump it away. And so she came down, and she not only said hi, but she gave us this amazing, like, snack goodie bag, like, tote bag, which Amanda took the tote bag because she's like, ooh, I like that, mm -hmm. and I could use that for my project bag, but she had all these goodies and snacks, which we did, 
Lisa, thank you. Um, we were munching on those while stopped in, pra uh, in uh, traffic this morning. And now they're set up in the studio to have throughout the day at the studio so that we can all share. But she also included a skein of her self-striping yarn. So she initially started as just a self-striping company, and now she's branched out, and, and also fiber. But she's branched out into doing... Um, variegateds and semi-solids and she's also getting her own non-superwash yarn milled for her in a DK and fingering weight yarn which is coming out and she does kits with bags by Awesome Granny and many other people um, but she came out with this colorway at the end of last year it's called Dyer's Favorite 2018 and she realized last year that she was using about seven colors consistently throughout the year and so she said I'm going to make a self-striping colorway using all these colors I was really attracted to in this year and she said I think I want to do this every year so she gifted me a skein because she thought I would like it and it's on her mountain tweed which is 85% superwash BFL 20 15% nylon nap and I adore it so it has like this um raspberry plum colorway a very light gray a gold an indigo a highlighter glow stick green and like a ra um i'd say like a raspberry color it just blows me away i can't wait to see it knit up so thank you so much lisa you're amazing and um maybe we'll do a self-striping knit along between the two of us because there's actually a skein I bought of hers that I was going to knit for you and it's um I can't remember what she called it but it's based off of Monopoly and it has all the colors of the Monopoly board on it oh, so I actually bought it because I thought like it's kind of rainbowy but it's based off of, like and it goes in the order of the colors on the Monopoly board and I was like, oh, I'll knit those for Amanda for Christmas in 2036. Um, <laughs> I've got quite a bit of Lisa's stash, but um, I think it'll be fun. Now that you're doing socks, you can knit your own, and I could gift those to you. Um, some other things that I bought at the market that I can't show you, I stopped by the Indian Lake Artisans Needles booth. Um, they were actually right behind us, um, and usually we see them in Madison as well as many other markets. Um, but they, as well as us, decided to try Pittsburgh um, instead of Madison this year. And I had heard on the latest Grocery Girls episode, they were at Stitches West. And the West Market floor is so big, I didn't get time to catch up with them. Um, but uh, the Grocery Girls, Tracy, who was there, she bought one of their new needles, which is a new um, recycled composite material that has the warmth of wood, but is not... Um, is slicker than wood so it has it's not cold like metal but it has the slickness almost of metal and they are known for their hexagonal needles which I was a little like mm, I don't think I'm gonna like based off of my previous experiences with square needles now they're the only ones who have um, like patented the hexagonal shape square needles that have like the four corners and I've heard a lot that that like can change your gauge and whenever I've knit with them they actually like point your like Put a, more of a dent into my finger while I'm knitting um, and I got to talk with them for a while and they're like here try them out and so I was knitting on something and they're like you know um, try doing some you know knit two togethers and, and slip slip knits and things like that um, so I ordered a size 5 40 inch to do shawls on and that's actually what I'm going to use to design my new wrap on but they have to make that specific specifically for me because you can order your, you know, your size tip and then your size cord and they actually make it and it's an interchangeable um, and the cord actually swivels around in the needle too. So they are not the cheapest needle. I would say they are a little bit cheaper than signatures, but I have gotten to know um, the two people and I'm so, Pam is the wife. I do not know the husband's name. I'm so sorry. I, somebody would say it and I'd be like, yes, that's it. Uh, <laughs> But um, I've gotten to know them through the years and chit chat with them and you're like, you know what, I can't bring more yarn home, but I can always bring home more tools and accessories. And I love supporting smaller businesses. So I had never supported them before. So they are gonna be mailing me um, my new needle very soon. And um, now see, I don't get it. There was a family with a kid in a wagon that walked by. He's and, asleep facing oh, this corn way. dogs facing, I shouldn't say anything, but there was no barking. You're welcome. Um, so I did get order a needle from them. They're going to be shipping that to me soon. Um, I also bought six bars of homemade soap. 
um, actually professionally made soap. Um, there was a booth right when you walked into our room and they had a bunch of lovely scents. Um, and Andy even liked some, so I got six different scents. Um, and I love to, sh when I shower, I like to smell good in the shower. It just sounds like you with so. candles. Like anytime we go to like TJ Maxx, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then you look in the cart and he has 11 candles. Do I burn them though? Sure, but I mean, wow. Do I wash myself? Sure, but I mean. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> I don't stank. I mean, but you have cologne, so. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right, so then we were right across from the ladies of Bead Biz, which I've seen at other shows, but um, I didn't realize it was them, and they had never, like, realized we were us, and um, as they pointed out in the first, like, ten seconds of meeting each other, we were like, oh, queer couple corner, um, because they're a lesbian couple and we are a gay couple, and so we were, like, having fun and we were chit-chatting all weekend, and they have beautiful beads and, like, a rainbow on their back wall, and I was like, oh don't do enough with beads blah 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 blah. as one does when you're staring at something all weekend so I was like you know what I had this idea pop in my brain I was like I need something with beads and I was looking for patterns that I could do with beads and bring into the shop and I was like why don't I do something elegant yet simple I think I can do this and so I picked I wanted to use a gradient too because I was like mm, I feel like we need more gradient support in our booth right so this is one of our newest this is actually I think the newest color ensemble that I had done, which Amanda renamed for me, which is more appropriately named. This is fruit salad, so it comes with six 20 gram mini skeins, 120 grams, 552 yards total on our showstopper base. And then I picked as a coordinating, because you know, you gotta, when you have like lights and darks, you have to, um, you know, pick the right contrasting color. Um, and this just screamed to go with it. And it actually works, and I want to name the wrap something that works with this. It's fruit salad, and then this is called Mary's Jam, um, because Andy's mom's name is Mary, and she loves purple. And so, and she does, like, make jam and stuff, usually strawberry, which my mom actually loves her freezer jam, and, like, we stock her up with freezer jam, but... She's out, by the way. Oh, well, then she can come over and get some, because we've got jars upon jars of it in our deep freeze. Anyway, so Mary's Jam... Two skeins I picked to go with fruit salad. So I got to, Mandy, I need you to help me. <laughs> See, she got chills because she's like, oh, it works <laughs> together so perfectly. Um, so then the ladies at Bead Biz, I had picked some beads, which I'll show you. But then I also got the Gossamer Web Flegel Beater, which I'd heard about, um, to help me because I am placing the beads. And while I do have a crochet hook, what's really cool about this beater is there is a hooked end down here. And what you do is you take one of these stoppers off and you can scoop up as many beads as this will hold, put the stopper back on. It'll hold um, a whole line of beads rather than individually picking up each bead. And then right here, it looks like a crochet hook, but it's not. It's actually notched. You're not going to be able to really see it. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's all right. It won't focus because it's an iPad, but it's notched rather than actually hooked. And that will be... Um, what will grab the yarn and then I can put the bead on the stitch. Um, so I got that to try out um, and you do have to get the appropriate size for your bead. Now you do need at least a size 6 seed bead for fingering weight yard. Size 8s are not large enough and you need to use size 8 seed beads with lace weight. However, the beads that I felt worked perfectly with this project were size 5, which are actually larger than a size 6. Um, but after looking at the lace pattern that I want to use um, and how I'm going to use them, I think that they'll be fine. And these are actually cool because they're triangle beads, so they have a bit more glass to them. And um, what's funny is the, all these names... So I got two packs of these beads from them, and they are size 5 triangle beads in the colorway Pink Lemonade. Going with a fruit thing. Yeah, something. So they look like this, but I felt they complemented the gradient very well. But the beads are not going on this part. I'm going to use this for the garter section. The beads will be popping in the purple lace sections. Popping in the purple. So, um, yeah. So I got about 500 to 550 beads here. Um, I said, let's try to 
use that many, and we'll see how it goes if I need to add a third pack, but I don't want to make so many beads that it makes the kit excessively expensive, so... Um, but they were very nice and gave me a discount since I'm going to be designing and they want to work with me on my design, which is amazing that we can both offer kits in our booth. Um, and we do very different shows sometimes. So, um, I'm excited for that collaboration. So thank you ladies. Um, I believe that was, um, one name is on here. Jean and Esther, I believe were the ladies of Bead Biz. So, and they had their youngest son there, Daxton, who was a hoot and a half and he was hanging out in our booth. For some of the uh, weekend so that's what I got it's going on I'm excited to get that new design on the needles and see if I can actually make it happen and how easy it happens and all that jazz so all right pretties do you have any stash enhancement that you wanted to share no the shirt does not stash really but something new kind <laughs> of fiber related I'm out of coffee all right, um, last, no, we have our giveaway this week. And our giveaway is for uh, the book Home by Pam Allen. Um, and this is 18 knitable projects to keep you comfy. So I thought that was cool. This again was generously donated to the podcast by our fairy yarn mother. And look at that. Oh, big wrap. That's what's on the front, but it's sharing it with her. Her significant other. Um, so this is put out in a conjunction with Pam Allen, or with Quince and Company, designing, you know, Pam Allen designing for Quince and Company. But there's things for, you know, his and her garter stitch vests. Uh, there's the wrap. Um, lots of simple things that it's great to wear around the house. The Maggie cardigan is what she was saying was cute there. But then there's other things you know you can use around the house, like uh, bowls and slippers. and Now that's kind of cool. So I was actually, um, one of our friends, Helena of Oink Pigments, was not wearing this, but she was wearing something like this, kind of a cocoon type thing. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. And I actually thought you might look really cute in um, something like she was wearing. Um, I had something so. like that and it was annoying to wear. Cause I don't like when I have to like keep it like hold, hold down. It depends on like what you're doing. Like Helena was actually sitting in her booth for most of the yeah. day. So when you're just kind of sitting there, you're knitting or doing stuff. And she was actually drop spindling and stuff. Now this actually looks pretty comfortable. Like I would wear this. I don't know if I'd wear it that long. This is the Edith cardigan. You can see you wrap. And this is mostly for like sitting around the house wrapped up on a Saturday, right? Yeah, there's so, a lot of cute stuff in there. So... But since Mandy didn't nab it, you I get know, dibs. I can't win it. <laughs> That's okay. I offer, We offered it, and she's like, no, I don't want it. But she didn't, like, really look through it. So when we flip through it on the show, but it's all right. So in order to be eligible to win this, you need to go over to the Dramatic Knits video podcast group on Ravelry. There will be a thread open on <laughs> the um, group. And the question this episode is, what do you miss most about being a kid? So go on over there, answer only once. It'll be a no chatter thread and um, you'll be entered to win and we will randomly draw a winner next episode. What do you miss most about being a kid? Even though you're still kind of a kid to me. Uh, I don't you're know. my little sister. I know, but sister. I've always been the baby of everything and it's always annoyed me. You're not a baby anymore. No. I have no idea. What do I miss? Going, not having to do, like, work, coming home from school, like, having to do homework or anything, like, being that young, and just going out immediately and having a blast with friends and not caring about anything in the world. That's what I, <laughs> I miss. I, I miss know. recess. And, like, naps on cots. No, I hated that because I never wanted to nap. 
But now I wish I had well, yeah, designated I mean, now, nap time. Like, now I wish we like could put down cots and have siestas here and after we were done playing on the <gasps> playground. Like siesta time and then like a like the lights turn off and like there's little yeah, dazzling and, lights and uh, a little disco. I don't know about that, but I was like, you draw the curtains and <sighs> Because actually, we were talking last week that the place next door has curtains that from the signage company in town that you can see out, but they can't see in. And so we were talking about, oh, maybe we should do that for the studio because we get a lot of lucky loos <laughs> in town. So No, but there's a lot of people, the dogs will bark at them like crazy, but it actually like puts a smile on my face because I'll see a lot of people. There's a diner uh, a few doors down and a lot of people go there. For breakfast and lunch and whatnot and i'll see so many people come up to and like look at he has a few mannequins in the front with some shop samples and they'll look and stare at them and it puts a smile on my face because I, I don't know it makes me happy well and to be honest a lot of the clientele that i have breakfast there are of an older generation yeah and so they just come by and they're like hello <laughs> hello yeah they um so, yeah. Um, all right. So, go on over. Go enter for that um, giveaway of home. And now we're going to move into Inside the Knitter's Studio. So, we've got our question and answer thread in our Ravelry group. And we'll be slowly but surely working through questions. If any questions pop up that you'd like to ask us and have us answer, may not be immediately, maybe in a few months. But um, we'd be more than willing to answer questions as long as they are relatively... Um, you know, non-intrusive. We're pretty much an open book. Um, the next question in the thread was, what's your favorite yarn base? So what do you like knitting with um, so far? So um, be interesting to hear our differing answers because, you know, you've had a limited amount, but you've knit with a few different bases so far. Um, and I would say for me, I really like things that have silk in them, um, and, but it depends on the project. Um, I do like knitting with a single in the correct type of project. Um, I do feel like a single is really cool to knit with and, and the, the drape that you get in the finished object. But I think that's because I'm primarily an accessory and shawl knitter. That's what I enjoy knitting the most. However, I do realize that in order to keep myself engaged in this craft, I need to broaden what I knit. And so I've been, you know, I've done socks for a long time. And I'm getting my feet even more wet into sweaters and garments. But I think that particular um, it, topic is, is on trend. I feel like garments are having its heyday right now. Like they're gonna, you're going to see an upswing in garment knitting. Um, but yeah, so singles depending mostly. But again, it depends on the project. Um, See, I want to say a base that I've never actually worked with because, well, I've never knit with it, but I touch it all the time. <laughs> um, and that's uh, the our Dramaturg base, which is DK. I don't know why. It's just so squishy. I'm such a texture person, and it's so, I just love it. It's so squishy. And I mean, it's similar to worsted, I guess. I don't know. And there's almost, to me, there's almost like a sheen to it. I don't know. I love it. And it's, I want to say, what have I knit with besides I've knit your fingering showstopper and like worsted weight. I think that's it. So, um, another one, I've never knit with it, obviously, but the monologue base, the yak. Is and that's a single base as well. But yeah, the, the yak in it and the silk, and it's got some silk too. Yeah. Um, you'll get there. You got your choice whenever you want. I don't know. Awesome. So we'd like, um, no, that's not a contest, but you can tell us what you like to knit with in the episode thread <laughs> if you want. Um, but yeah, so, but if you have any other questions, go on over to the episode thread and post your question in the Q&A thread. All right, let's move into a round of applause. Last episode, we were giving away another book put out through Quince and Company, Scarves, Etc. 4, which is a various, um, a variety of designers in here, but a lot of scarves, shawls, cowls, things of that nature. And we asked, what was or is your favorite job you've ever had? And the winner was number 20, who is Samash 
Williams 94. That is Samantha from Florida. Congratulations, Samantha. And she said, my favorite job was actually just a teacher's assistant position in my high school's library. I loved the silence during that time and I've always loved books. I think a lot of us who knit love books as well. Um, I think that I've always wanted to be a librarian. <laughs> that was my plan for originally when I was like, oh, I'm going to be a teacher. And then instead of retiring, I'm going to be a librarian because I love it. But that, who knows? Yeah. You'll have to chit chat with Laura at our retreat because she is a librarian. A middle I know. school librarian. All right, um, we want to encourage you to go over to our March 2019 Race to the Finished Object Contest Ravelry, on our Ravelry group um, and go ahead and post anything you finished this month into that thread. We'll have two wonderful prizes. The first will be something from our prize pool. The second will be a pattern from our featured designer, who is Susie White, also known as Prairie Girl Designs. And um, we can't thank her enough for agreeing to be our featured designer. All right, let's move into center stage, all things leading men fiber arts. We're going to, um, I don't have much to discuss. Um, the knitting at the estate retreat, um, we did, there's still some movement going on. I have to take care of a few administrative things on our end um, here today. Uh, and then, so if you're on the waiting list, keep your eyes peeled. Um, there's going to be some more um, things going out there. We have our hat drive going on in the knitting at the estate Ravelry group, so go on there. And um, if you haven't joined the Ravelry group, please do so. Um, we also have off-site spots still available. Some people are purchasing them, but I think we have four spots still available on our website. So you can purchase the off-site spots directly off the leadingmenfiberarts.com website, and you pay the $300 deposit right up front. That being said, April 1st is payment number two. So um, as of April 1st, um, it will be the... Um, What's listed on the website, it'll be the deposit plus the first payment, which is $100 for the offsite. So it'll be $400, and then you'll be responsible for $100 more on the third payment uh, time. So um, we're excited. We are working on putting a call out for um, sponsors, donators. Um, we have six vendors selected already that applied and been selected for our marketplace so we are waiting on um a few low few more logos so if you applied and you were accepted i need some sort of logo or link please if not you'll just be listed and linked um on the website but we'll put that up in ravelry and on the website um, so you can see check out the marketplace if you're local the market will be open on saturday september 21st um, from one to four to the public as well so it's not just retreat attendees um yeah so other than that we're pretty excited it's you know a little bit here or there trying to take bites as much as we can chew um and still maintain you know our day-to-day -day business speaking of which we have upcoming shows we have this weekend off we'll be in the dice studio working but we don't have to go anywhere um, but next weekend, we are actually next Wednesday, we leave for Loveland, Colorado. We'll be vending at the Interweave Yarn Fest um, in Loveland, Colorado. And um, that'll be March 28th through 30th that that will be open. And I believe that's a Thursday through Saturday. It's something weird. I can't remember now. Can we look? But um, yeah, I wrote down the dates, but that was last episode after last episode. But I think it's like a Thursday through Sunday um, is... 28th is Thursday. Yeah, Thursday through Saturday um, is the market. So you can check that out. Just Google Interweave Yarn Fest and it'll take you to their website. And that's put on through Interweave. Um, there has been some questions regarding Interweave. It has been announced that F&W Media, who owns Interweave, has filed for bankruptcy and people have been asking if the yarn fest is still going on it is um just because of the news of them filing for bankruptcy does not mean that the company is going out of business um it's just something that has been posted regarding their financial means so um but we're excited to be to colorado we loved estes so we hope that if you are local you'll be able to come out and say hi and visit us um we're looking forward to that event and hopefully as long as the um, weather, you know, takes care of itself. The drive shouldn't be too bad either, but 
I think that's pretty much it. Somebody wants to join us to say bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I don't think I have anything else to add to you. Have an amazing week. Two weeks, actually. Oh, and well, we'll, but have an amazing week this week, and then have another amazing week the next week. And we'll probably be recording on Monday again in two weeks, because we'll be driving yeah. home on Sunday from Colorado. It is not as short of a drive. <laughs> it's about 14 hours to um, Loveland, I believe, so... Um, but we'll see you again in two weeks. And until then, we hope you knit something dramatic. dramatic.